All right, the first thing we need to do is to introduce the concept of a dialog box. So let's add a new class called dialog box. Now, this is going to be an abstract class with a single abstract method called changed. So public abstract void changed, which takes a UI control. And by the way, we have two UI control classes in this project. Here's the one that we created in the mediator package in this section. And we have another implementation that we created early on in the course. We're going to use the one in the mediator package. So whenever a UI control changes state, it's going to call its dialog box and say, hey, I am changed. That is the idea. Now, here we could also use an interface because this abstract class has a single abstract method. We don't have anything else in this class. But in a real GUI framework, this dialog box is going to provide some common behavior to all dialog boxes. So I'm going to leave this as an abstract class. Okay. Now, we should change our UI control class and have each UI control know its dialog box. So here we declare a private field of type dialog box and call it owner. So every UI control knows its owner. We should initialize this using a constructor. So let's generate that real quick. Good. Here's the field and the constructor. Now, if we go to the list box class, we get a compilation error because the UI control no longer has a default parameterless constructor. Now it has a constructor that takes a parameter of type dialog box. So in this class, we should also add a constructor that takes a dialog box object, and then we should pass it to the constructor of its base class. We can fix this problem real quick by pressing Alt and Enter and create a new constructor. There you go. So now we have this new constructor that takes a dialog box object, and using the super keyword, we're passing it to the constructor of the UI control. Now, when we change the selected item, we should tell the dialog box that this object is changed. So we say owner. Look, we don't have access to the owner because we declared it as a private field. As I told you earlier, private members are not inherited by subclasses. So we need to replace this with protected. This will still be hidden from the outside, but it will be inherited by the subclasses. So now we have access to the owner field. We can say, hey, owner, I am changed. So this object is changed. Now we should apply the same changes to the text box class. So first we create a custom constructor. Here it is. And then when we change the content of this text box, we call owner the changed and pass this. And one last time in the button class, we should create a custom constructor. Now, when the state of this object changes, we can call owner the changed with this. So now our GUI framework is using the mediator pattern. Our dialog box is playing the role of a mediator. Every time a UI control changes state, it's going to call its dialog box. The dialog box will figure out what should happen next. So in our application, we should create a class called articles dialog box. This class should extend the abstract dialog box class. Now here we should implement the changed method. The implementation is very easy. Before we implement it, we need to declare the fields in this class. So on this dialog box, we need to have a list box, a text box, and a button. So private list box, we call it articles list box, and set it to a new list box. Now here we should pass the dialog box that owns this list box. That is the current object the current dialog. Similarly, we create a text box. We call it title text box and set it to a new text box. Once again, we have two text box implementations. Here's one in the mediator package, and here's the one that we created early on in the course. We're going to use the one in the mediator package. And one last time, button, we call it save button and set it to a new button with this. Good. Now, in the changed method, we're going to implement all the interaction between these objects. So first we have to figure out who is the control that is changed. If this control is the articles list box, then we should populate the title text box. So we call title text box that set content. 
here we should get the current item in the list box. So we call article list box dot get selection. And then we should enable the button. So save button dot set enable to true. Now I would prefer to extract this logic into a separate method. Let me show you. So I'm going to create a private method, private void. Let's say article selected. The name of this method clearly identifies what it's supposed to do. So this method gets called when an article is selected. Then we're going to populate our text box and enable the save button. Now we don't need these ugly curly braces. We simply call article selected. Else if control equals title text box. Then we're going to have a similar method. So let's create that real quick. Private void. Let's say title changed. And over here, we're going to call this new method. Now in this method, we're going to enable or disable the save button depending on the content of the text box. So we can declare a variable called is empty. And first we get the content of the text box. So title text box, let's get content. Actually, I would prefer to store this in a separate variable that is shorter. Now, here we write a Boolean expression. If content is null or is empty, so if it's null or an empty string, we treat it as empty. Then we call save button dot set enable to not is empty. So we're going to enable the button if the text box is not empty. Okay. So with this mediator pattern, all the logic behind this form, behind this dialog box is in a single place. Now let's bring everything together. So we go to our main method. First, we create a dialog box, new article dialog box. Now we want to simulate user interaction. We want to simulate the scenario where the user selects an article, and then we want to see that the button becomes enabled and the title text box gets populated. So in the articles dialog box class, let's add a new method, public void simulate user interaction. Here we're going to call articles list box that set selection to article one. And then we want to print the content of the text box. So text box, here we call title text box that get content. And then we print. You want to see if the button is enabled or not. So we call save button dot is enabled. So back in the main method, we're going to simulate user interaction. Let's run the program and see what happens. So our text box is populated with the title of the article and the button is enabled. Now, back in this method, after we select the article, let's say the user clears the title. So we call title text box dot set content to an empty string. Now, when we run the program, the button should become disabled. Take a look. So the button is disabled, beautiful. Let's say right after that, the user changes the content of this text box to article two. Let's run the program. Now our button becomes enabled. Beautiful. Now there is another way to implement the mediator pattern and we're going to talk about that next.